Adapted from the 2004 French film Le Convoyeur, and borrowing the basic outline of the story Wrath of Man is a time-shifting neo-noir crime thriller filled with tough, sometimes violent men, gangsters and former combat veterans mostly, with a smattering of security guards and cops. And I, for one, would love to see him again, Wrath of Man 2. I mean, why not? The first movie was so dope. Richie and Jason Statham team up for the fourth time in their director-actor collaboration, marking their first partnership since Revolver. The movie, featuring supporting roles from Holt McCallany, Jeffrey Donovan, Chris Riley, Josh Hartnett, Laz Alonzo, Raul Castillo, Diobia Opare, Eddie Marzan, and Scott Eastwood, follows the story of H, played by Statham, a newly appointed cash truck driver in Los Angeles. His thwarting of a robbery brings attention to his gun skills and mysterious background. The global release of Wrath of Man occurred on April 22, 2021, with a subsequent release in the U.S. on May 7. Despite receiving mixed reviews from critics, the film has achieved a worldwide box office gross of $104 million. Set in Los Angeles, the narrative unfolds with a tragic armored truck robbery that results in the death of two guards and an innocent bystander. This incident sets the stage for a sequence of events narrated through four distinct acts. From here, the story is divided into four parts. First, a dark spirit. Five months following the armored truck robbery, Patrick Hill becomes an armored truck guard at Fortico Security. His manager Terry praises his references, and the company trainer, known as Bullet, gives him the nickname H. Despite Hill barely passing firearm training, he faces a challenging start with colleagues like Boy Sweat Dave and Dana Curtis. While on a pickup, Bullet is taken hostage, leading Hill to successfully manipulate a panicked Dave into cooperating with the robbers before eliminating the entire crew with remarkable marksmanship and ruthless efficiency. FBI agents investigating the initial robbery question Hill and their suspicions about him are elevated. However, their superior, Agent King, instructs them to cease their inquiries into Hill. Subsequently, Hill receives a dossier containing Fortico employee files and an autopsy report. Three months later, Hill and Bullet encounter trouble in Chinatown, but the would-be robbers flee upon seeing Hill. As Hill continues investigating his co-workers, mutual suspicion intensifies among them. Second, Scorched Earth. In the backdrop of Scorched Earth, five months prior to joining Fortico and on the day of the initial robbery, Hill shares a moment with his son Dougie. Unveiling his association with a robbery crew, Hill reluctantly accepts the task of monitoring an armored truck's route, leaving Dougie in the car. The heist unfolds, and when the robbers notice Dougie, Hill rushes back only to witness his son's tragic murder before being shot and left for dead. Three weeks later, Hill awakens in the hospital and meets with King, who provides him with a list of suspects and agrees to temporarily turn a blind eye. Revealing that Hill is, in fact, Mason Hargraves, a notorious crime lord, the narrative follows his determination to find Dougie's killer. Alongside his men, Mike, Brendan, and Moggy, Hargraves embarks on a ruthless mission, eliminating nearly everyone on King's list without yielding any results. Concerns about potential retaliation are raised by Mike, leading Hargraves to agree to a lay-low in London. However, instead of keeping a low profile, he adopts the identity of Patrick Hill and joins Fortico, intending to continue the pursuit on his own. The revelation unfolds that it was Hargraves' own crew who attempted the Chinatown robbery, halted only when Mike recognized his true identity. Third, bad animals, bad. Before the initial robbery, a faction of dissatisfied Afghanistan veterans, including Carlos, Sam, Brad, Tom, Jan, and their ex-Sergeant Jackson, opts to transition into a life of crime. Their initial heist yields a modest sum of $110,000. Guided by an unnamed guard from Jackson's military past, they plan a more audacious robbery targeting an armored truck operated by Fortico. In the midst of this heist, Jan's unnecessary actions lead to the shooting of the guards, Dougie, and Hargraves himself, who manages to witness Jan's face during the chaos. This pivotal moment sets the stage for subsequent events and significantly influences the unfolding narrative. Fourth, liver, lungs, spleen, and heart. Five months later, the disgruntled veterans reconvene, 
with a grand plan to pilfer over $150 million from the Fortico depot during the Black Friday weekend. It's revealed that Bullet, Fortico's trainer, is Jackson's inside man, leveraging this information to coerce Hargraves into collaboration. The crew successfully seizes control of the depot, but an unexpected alarm disrupts their operation, leading to a fierce gunfight resulting in casualties among both guards and robbers. Amid the chaos, Hargraves retaliates, eliminating several members of the crew. In the chaotic aftermath, Jan kills Bullet and Jackson to escape solo with the stolen money. Back at his residence, Jan discovers a phone concealed in one of the money bags, planted by Hargraves to trace its location. Hargraves confronts Jan with Dougie's autopsy report, strategically shooting him in the same locations as Dougie. Choosing to abandon the ill-gotten gains, Hargraves declares his mission accomplished to Agent King and is driven away, leaving behind the turbulent aftermath of the heist. Now, tell me, isn't this something you want to see more of? In Guy Ritchie's extensive filmography, this movie stands out as one of his best-directed works, surprising audiences with a departure from his usual style and tone. Unlike the energetic and light-hearted vibes found in films like Snatch, Rock and Rolla, The Man from U.N.C.L.E., King Arthur, Legend of the Sword, and others, this film embraces a decadent darkness, so ominous that one might question if its central character is akin to the devil himself. The approach here is a departure from the consciously clever maneuvers associated with Quentin Tarantino and Guy Ritchie's previous works, leaning more towards the straightforward and unironic spirit reminiscent of classic films like The Killing, The Killers, and Criss Cross. The portrayal of Statham's character is likened to the iconic figures found in Clint Eastwood's Western films, such as High Plains Drifter and Pale Rider, adding a layer of depth and intensity to the narrative. Unlike the previous Ritchie and Statham films, which had funny moments and quirky characters, Wrath of Man has a more serious tone that will keep you guessing all the way through. One reason to look forward to the sequel is the captivating story that unfolded in the first movie. It introduced H, portrayed by Statham, as a mysterious and skilled cash truck driver in Los Angeles. The plot, divided into four acts, delved into H's past, connecting it with the lives of armored truck guards, disgruntled Afghanistan veterans turned criminals, and a crime lord seeking justice for his son's murder. The intricate storyline, presented through various perspectives and timelines, added depth to the characters and their motivations. The careful storytelling kept audiences engaged, eager to learn more about H's mysterious background and the complex web of relationships that influenced the events in the film. Furthermore, the cast, led by Jason Statham, delivered exceptional performances. Statham's portrayal of H as a composed and deadly protagonist expanded his repertoire, showcasing versatility beyond the action-comedy roles typically associated with him. The supporting actors, including Holt McCallany, Jeffrey Donovan, and Josh Hartnett, also made significant contributions, enhancing the overall intensity and authenticity of the film. In Wrath of Man, Guy Ritchie's direction demonstrated his skill in adapting to and excelling in various genres. Renowned for his energetic and light-hearted films like Snatch and The Man from U.N.C.L.E., Ritchie revealed a different aspect with this neo-noir crime thriller. This departure from his usual style brought an element of surprise for audiences, underscoring Ritchie's versatility as a director. Thanks for tuning in to our recap of Wrath of Man and the exciting prospects for its sequel. If you were gripped by the suspense and intensity of the first installment, tell us in the comments below which character or storyline you're most eager to see develop in Wrath of Man 2. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, tap the bell icon, and stay updated with all of our upcoming movie insights. Until next time, keep the excitement alive, and we'll catch you at the movies.